three of the most significant challenges to legal education nowadays, specifically in our country. First of all, I think it's a general challenge to every nation today, is the level of complexity uh, that uh, law acquired in the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, if in the past to study law was to study a, a significant but contingent set of rules, doctrines, and with the support of authoritative interpretation of these laws, today the number of rules, the complexity of these rules, the number of sources of law, not just state law, but also uh, self-regulation, national and international, uh, gives a larger spectrum of study for every student all over the world. Second, there is an invasion of other disciplines in the decisions that law normally regulated. Today, every area of law has to take into account uh, economics, politics, morality, and uh, this uh, impose to law schools to become also a much more sophisticated environment. So now we not just have to count with professors that know the, the, the law in the books, but also that are able uh, to make very sophisticated arguments involving all these disciplines. So this is the first challenge. Uh, the second challenge is related to technology, mostly communication technology. If in the past all the information that was necessary to share with students were in books or they were withheld by the professor, they had the monopoly of, of the information, today any students with a laptop in front of them can access all the information produced by humanity uh, in all this uh, uh, millennium. Uh, so students today are much able to produce their own education. And professors have to change their positions. They have to understand that they are not the authority anymore, but they can, in some sense, guide education, provoke and stimulate indication about uh, legal issues. So I think this is the second challenge. And uh, I, uh, most of law professors prefer, obviously, the traditional way of teaching. Uh, the third uh, challenge, and this is directly related to Brazil, is that if this country is becoming a much more preeminent uh, player in the international sphere, both economically and politically speaking, and this uh, brings uh, the necessity to form lawyers that can understand this globalized world, Brazil also has uh, several legacies uh, regarding structural inequality, the fragility of its institutions, the necessity to uh, renovate all these institutions that brings to a law school of, as ours the responsibility to think from the Brazilian perspective. So this is a particular challenge to a school like ours. Legal education in the last century has uh, predominantly been parochial most of all on, on central countries. If you take uh, countries on the periphery, they were always exposed to legal ideas that are, were more globalized. So in this sense, countries as Brazil are in a point of advantage in, in reference to some other countries as the European or the North American countries. Uh, but in any case, education has been extremely parochial in terms of uh, uh, law teaching all around the globe. Today, however, there is a necessity of a new kind of professional, not just a professional that will engage on economic relations or will engage in political relations outside their countries, but also it's nece necessary to have a larger uh, repertoire of ideas that you can put in place in your own country. I think the risk of becoming more globalized is to become more colonized. Uh, however, uh, uh, comparative law, global law, can be also a very sub, uh, subversive way of challenging uh, uh, established ideas in any kind of jurisdiction. Our school, which is one school among more than a thousand law schools in Brazil, decided since the beginning to become 
a school that involve global legal education since the first day. So our students are exposed to international law, to global law, to comparative law. Most of the cases that are passed to students, even if they are about uh, domestic law, they will stimulate the students to uh, try to find other solutions in other systems. So I think this is a way by which the school is giving to the students a larger repertoire. We are uh, willing to form more cosmopolitan lawyers. Besides the change that we made in our curriculum, in our way to approach law to become more globalized, uh, one key point is the exposure of our students and our professors and in the way that we engage with other law schools around the globe in uh, relations to research and teaching. If in the past the relation was much more north-south, where the knowledge was in the north and schools uh, uh, in the south were recipients of this knowledge, today we have a very a horizontal relationship where we are forming alliances with schools in, in countries that uh, share the same kinds of challenges that we share and where the kind of education and the kind of research that we are producing here can also have a standing on the international sphere. An example of this is the Law School Global League that we are forming with more than 20 schools around the globe and that take in equal uh, position schools in China, India, Brazil, South Africa, US or Europe. I think this will uh, break uh, this uh, hierarchical relationships that traditional were built in the last century.